What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news, join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Vince has zero chance of ever returning to WWE, who told Vince McMahon to resign, a female WWE talent talks the danger of speaking out in WWE, a Triple H lied to Cody, Cody issued a warning to WWE, Liv Morgan criminal case update and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists, also check out our new website wrestleamia.com and now listen to the intro and get straight into our first story. Now first story looks at Vince has zero chance of ever returning to WWE. On top of today's news is report that Vince McMahon is effectively done with any role in the WWE ever, thanks to the allegations made against him by former WWE employee Janelle Grant. The conventional wisdom is that even if McMahon prevails, such as the case being dismissed or McMahon prevailing at trial, TKO Holdings wants nothing to do with him. However, fans know McMahon has an uncanny ability for enduring scandals and walking away smelling like the proverbial roses. Nonetheless, Fightful Select is reporting that WWE talent had been told McMahon's affiliation with WWE is over, there's no foreseeable path for return. Nonetheless, Ringside News reports some individuals within the talent roster have speculated that McMahon may attempt to work his way back into the company in some capacity, but it has been emphasized to them that Vince McMahon is no longer part of WWE's future plans. Given the shocking nature of the allegations made against McMahon, which is worth repeating have not been proven in court or admitted to, TKL Holdings likely feels it has no choice but to distance itself from Vince McMahon. The Janelle Grant lawsuit may only be the first of many and there's also the specter of a criminal investigation looming. Consequently, TKO can't afford the negative publicity of giving McMahon the benefit of keeping him around only to have even more legal proceedings emerge. It's also likely TKO Holdings wants to take steps to remove anyone accused of wrongdoing in order to prevent others from suing TKO and alleging the company knew that there were bad actors in the company but that TKO failed to do anything about it. Next up, who told Vince McMahon to resign? Uh, who told Mr. McMahon it was time to go and why? According to The Hollywood Reporter, things moved quickly after the lawsuit broke and on 26 January, Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel and TKO President and COO Mark Shapiro called McMahon and told him it would be in the best interest of the company for him to resign. He agreed and submitted his resignation. The report stressed that there were concerns about the current WWE advertising partners dropping the WWE as Slim Jim did. Having McMahon resign seemed to solve this, but what about the WWE's new TV rights deals? Were those jeopardized by the allegations against McMahon? The long-term TV deals with Netflix, NBC Universal, and the CW were not considered to be at risk, but with NBC Universal's rights for the WWE's premium live events coming up in 2026, and with UFC rights talks upcoming in 2025, Keeping McMahon as executive chairman of TKO while the lawsuit unfolded could have been problematic. Sources say that TKO executives reached out to all of the company's rights partners after the news broke, well aware of they needed to keep them in the loop onto what was happening. Vince McMahon's abrupt resignation from TKO Holdings shocked some fans and pundits because they expected him to stand his ground after the news of Janelle Grant's lawsuit broke. However, it appears that there were too many factors against Vince, and perhaps more importantly, he lacked the same power as before. Next up, a female talent talks dangerous speaking out in WWE. Will the Vince McMahon lawsuit lead to female wrestlers speaking about any problems in the industry, not necessarily about McMahon, but about bad behavior similar to the allegations made against McMahon? An anonymous female wrestler discussed the situation during a recent episode of News Nation. I wish I could speak on the matter. Unfortunately, I cannot. It's a difficult position because I still work in the industry and unfortunately there's no positive on women speaking out at this time. We tried before but we were surrounded by whispers or radio silence. I really wish I could, I'm just glad this is getting out. As the Vince McMahon lawsuit continues to generate controversy, the media is also reporting on the story. How long will the media follow this story is unknown, as history has shown the media typically moves on from one scandal to something fresher. This was seen after the Chris Benoit incident when TV news was flooded with stories about wrestling's dark side, only for the media's attention to turn to something bigger and badder. Next up, did Triple H lie to Cody? When did the WWE Chief Content Officer Triple H learn about TKO's decision to book The Rock vs Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40? Fans have been asked this ever since the 2nd February episode of SmackDown seemed to confirm the match was happening, but for some fans, the idea that Triple H booked Cody to win the Rumble must mean that the game was kept in the dark about the decision for The Rock to work WrestleMania. However, Dave Meltzer suggests this isn't the case, and he noted on X, My buddy Jay told me that since his tweets are private, I should probably note that the idea that Paul Levesque didn't know about The Rock signing with the company and him wrestling Reigns when he booked the Rumble is clearly not the case. 
he knew exactly what he was doing. As we mentioned in a previous video, there are various possible reasons for Cody winning, including elevating him by having him join the elite group of back-to-back -back Royal Rumble winners, throwing fans off the Rock vs. Roman trail, or building up to a bigger storyline such as the Rock vs. Roman becoming a triple threat. Now, there are other possibilities too, and frankly, the idea that WWE would leave Triple H in the dark about major plans for the WWE's biggest show of the year is really difficult to swallow. Do you think Triple H knew about his major move to The Rock returning to the ring? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Cody Rhodes warned WWE. Now, the wrestling world is still talking about this segment between Cody Rhodes, The Rock and Roman Reigns. A new report from Fightful Select has indicated that Rhodes warned WWE that fans might not be as accepting as they would like to have The Rock replace him in a manner seen on SmackDown. Those we spoke to claim that Cody Rhodes expressed to WWE that he thought the reaction wouldn't be the desired one, but still did the segment, and was said to other have been in a somber mood after. Other sources claim that this decision goes all the way up to Ari Emanuel and Mark Shapiro, and was even above Nick Khan and Triple H. The segment went down and featured The Rock and Cody Rhodes shaking hands. We haven't been able to find out what The Rock said to Cody Rhodes verbatim, but learned it was something in reference to their fathers. We've long heard that The Rock and Cody maintained a great relationship for years. It's unclear if The Rock vs Reigns is still the plan for WrestleMania 40, but however, fans aren't keeping quiet, and they've also shown their support for the American Nightmare by gobbling up his merchandise. Wrestling News reported, since then there have been strong reactions from fans, whether it be at live events for him, several hashtags that have been trending for days on social media, or the Rocky Sucks chance during Monday's Raw. The fans are showing the company their displeasure in a new way by boosting his t-shirt design on WWE Shop. While fans seem disgusted with the current plans, Meltzer noted that Raw sold an insane number of tickets for the 5th February show after The Rock's appearance on SmackDown, with Meltzer stating that the current controversy is benefiting the WWE financially. This story about Cody Rhodes' new shirt suggests this as well, and they may feel it justifies any decision to make Cody wait a bit longer to finish his story. Next up, The Rock's Instagram invaded by Cody fans. It appears that fans aren't just expressing their dissatisfaction with The Rock during TV shows, they're also invading his Instagram. The Rock recently posted a video from last Friday's Smackdown with this message. Last Supper, see all in Vegas this Thursday, people's champ. Cody supporters didn't pass at the opportunity to vent, with some fans replying with the We Want Cody hashtag and others commenting, please don't take away Cody's moment, and The Rock should sit this one out, hashtag We Want Cody. Now this doesn't mean that The Rock doesn't have his supporters, as Rock fans posted their excitement for Thursday's press conference and a potential Rock vs Roman match. Well, one thing is clear, the WWE Universe is paying closer attention to things, and their vocal reactions are also drawing mainstream attention. Could the WWE ask for anything more? Next up, a former NWA Women's Champion rejects WWE. It looks like former NWA Women's Champion Camille could be heading to AEW instead of the WWE. The 31-year-old wrestler held the NWA title for an incredible 812 days and is considered one of wrestling's top free agents. At one point it appeared she was WWE bound, with stories suggesting she would report to NXT. But now PW Insider is reporting that talks with WWE have hit a roadblock and that Camille is in deep discussions with AEW. She appeared in AEW during a reign as NWA Women's Champion and also appeared backstage on the 18th January episode of Dynamite. Now it's important to note that there are no reports of Camille signing with anyone yet and that she could find herself negotiating with WWE again after she sees what WWE is offering. AEW appears to be retooling its women's division and Camille could add a lot to its roster. Although they have a decent sized women's roster, the quality of talent is hit and miss. AEW president Tony Khan said he has a big announcement to make on the 7th February Dynamite and some fans believe it will involve Mercedes Money or Kazuchika Okada signing with a promotion. And finally, Liv Morgan's criminal case is closed. Last but not least, excellent news for Raw superstar Liv Morgan as a criminal case for marijuana possession is over. PW Insider is reporting, although Morgan was slated for a 20 February hearing in regard to the only charge left pending from her arrest, the charge of possession of marijuana, not more than 20 grams, PWInsider.com has learned that on 31st January, Morgan's attorney entered a plea of nolo contendere in regard to the charge. That is a plea in which a defendant accepts conviction as though a guilty plea had been entered against them, but that does not officially admit guilt to the charges against them. The report added a fine was imposed against Morgan as the court records list an assessment of $543, but not any additional fees. Previous reports indicated that Morgan had no heat with the WWE management over the case and it would have no bearing on her status in the company. She was still recovering from her shoulder injury when she was arrested, but is now back in the ring, having returned at the Rumble. The timing is good as she can now focus on making the most of things on the road to WrestleMania. But there you have it folks, the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below, I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.